Hey everybody, it is our midweek study session. We call this Winning Wednesday around here. This is remarners.com. We are talking about abortion today. We're gonna dive into this topic. Plus I have five NCLEX questions for you guys. And how you doing? Uh, my name is Regina Callion and I'm gonna help you get your nursing license by going over things that are on your nursing license exam. It's really that simple. You can also use this stuff for nursing school, but we're going to get into it. The first thing, as we talk about abortions, let's just, oh, let me tell you about Black Friday. <laughs> Pop up video. All right. So Black Friday is coming, guys. Um, and I had to let you know early to prepare your minds because Black Friday is a huge event here. I'm going to be releasing um, some new things. I'm going to be releasing some new things and I'll just leave it at that. But my goal is to help you remove the stress from studying for your NCLEX exam. Um, and when students know the content, like we're going to go over during Black Friday, they do so much better. They do so much better. Plus, we're going to have not only things that you will want to be participating in, but amazing Black Friday discounts too. So you'll hear more about that for sure. Prepare your minds. We're in the month of November. It's all about Black Friday. Also, so if you want to sign up for it, you can do that right now by going to remartnurse.com forward slash Black Friday, Black Friday. And I don't say this often, but you guys, this is definitely a Remart event you don't want to miss particularly if you are taking NCLEX, yeah, next year. So don't miss this. Go up right now so um, and sign up so that you can get first view, first access to the sweet Remark products. Black Friday is coming, baby. It's coming. I'm so excited for it. But we will be talking about abortions tonight, not Black Friday. It's coming. But um, the topic for tonight. So let's just define it. When we talk about an abortion here, it is defined as the expulsion of an embryo or fetus before it's vi viable. And that viability is usually before 20 weeks of gestation that we see in abortions. Let me rephrase that. Viability is after 20 weeks, right? And that just means that a baby is able to uh, grow outside of the uterine environment. So typically that is after 20 weeks or 500 grams. When we talk about abortion, abortion is a pregnancy that is terminated, terminated before that 20 week marker. All right. And there are different types of abortions. Um, some are spontaneous where the mother is unable to stop the progression of her cervical uh, dilation, or some are elective where they are inducing, inducing that premature labor scenario, uh, cervical dilation scenario. So 47% uh, of all abortions globally are unsafe. Usually it is the developing countries who are performing abortions under circumstances that are not ideal for the mothers. Okay. So let me make this bigger. So um, the risk factors for abortion are here. Ending a pregnancy early comes along with advanced age. Okay. And um, advanced maternal age. I was really shocked because when I had Shiloh, um, I was after 35 years old, and then I was considered a geriatric pregnancy. So it was just like, what? Like me? But yeah, in maternity, you age very quickly. So advanced age, previous miscarriage, previous election, elective abortion, um, uterine abnormalities such as adhesions, and adhesions are where you have the um, the fetus, or I should say embryo, sorry, the embryo is attached to the endometrium and there's like scar tissue there. So sometimes the, the uterus is ad adhesed to the lining, right? Or the embryos is, is stuck to the lining. And so that can cause abortion. Prolonged time to achieve pregnancy as well. 
smoking, alcohol, cocaine use, high caffeine intake. These are lifestyle things that induce abortion early on. Some other risk factors include low serum progesterone. Progesterone is a pregnancy hormone that is responsible for keeping a pregnancy going. So if you don't have a high progesterone level, then yes, your body won't know to keep a pregnancy going. Celiac disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, thyroid dysfunction, all right, which is the thyroid condition or Cushing syndrome, which is a cortical steroid issue, too much of that. Systemic lupus erythematosus is an issue. Infection, fever, trauma, a low BMI, so a person who does not have a lot of body fat, uh, less than 18.5, can also cause you to be at risk for premature uh, labor or abortion. Let's talk about um, the signs and symptoms of abortion. So during a normal pregnancy, you would not expect to see these things. These are abnormal cues that need to be noted. The first is a spontaneous vaginal bleeding. During pregnancy, um, Bleeding is always something that needs to be noted and the healthcare provider should be notified for that. Low uterine cramping or contractions, blood clots or passing tissue through the vagina, and then also hemorrhage and shock as well. When we talk about types of abortion, there are several types of abortion and the definitions give you an indication about the circumstances surrounding that particular abortion. So for example, miscarriage, this is a commonly termed spontaneous abortion. So with a spontaneous abortion, that means that the pregnancy has ended because of natural causes. Also with the, the miscarriage, typically it's something that the mother is not able to prevent from happening, all right? Induced abortion, this is an elective or a therapeutic abortion. And there are reasons why uh, some women would choose to have an elective abortion. So I think there is a stigma around this term abortions in general, and they are automatically taken to a negative factor, like it's a negative thing, an unwanted pregnancy. Um, I think they are usually considered elective measures, but there are natural abortions. There are abortions that um, are, you know, inevitable and the mother doesn't even, you know, know how to stop it from happening. Um, so yeah, there's many types of abortions. Um, and then this, this other one that we have here is a threatened abortion. And this abortion is significant for your nursing exam because with this abortion type in general, you have spotting and cramping. However, you don't have a cervical um, dilation. And so because of this, this is the abortion where you try to do everything you can to save the baby and the mother, right? So with the threatened abortion, this is where you typically see all of the interventions happening for the mom. So, you know, we want to save the baby. So we put the mom on complete bed rest, no bathroom privileges, right? We want her to keep herself in a calm environment so that she can keep the baby inside growing until it reaches the age of viability. And, um, that is the main, main nursing consideration for threatened abortion because you don't have cervical dilation. And also the membranes of that uh, fetus is still intact, right? So we want to preserve that. All right. Um, inevitable. I, I, I alluded to this, but inevitable um, abortion is where you have spotting and cramping and watch this, the cervix begins to thin out. It begins to dilate, begins to be dilated and effaced. And so this is one where sometimes it's nothing that can be done about it. It's going to happen for the mother. 
Incomplete abortion is one where you no longer have um, a vi viable pregnancy, but some of the parts of conception are passed while others remain. So it says here, loss of some of the products of conception occur. So maybe your the, the mother is passing meaty tissues, parts of the um, parts of the baby, a lot of you know uh, blood is happening, but there are other parts of conception that are not passed by the mother. So most often it says here the placenta is retained. And when we talk about NCLEX, even with a full term delivery, we always have to watch for parts of the placenta that are retained, okay? The complete, the complete abortion is a loss of all products of conception. So that means that the mother has uh, passed all the parts of the conception. And if you were to go looking for anything, you would not find evidence of any types of placenta inside of the mother. Also, you would have a cervix that was closed because there is nothing, the body naturally would close the cervix as there was nothing more to be uh, to be passed through the mother. So that's, that's important. We, we want to know what the cervix is doing, how it's responding to these different types of abortions. So think about that in your mind as I'm going over it. Make sure that you're hitting all of the parts about this, this concept. Missed abortions. Um, missed abortions happen. And sometimes the, the mother does not even know that it um, it happened. And sometimes they do know because they will have signs afterwards that the in the fetus is no longer viable. So products of conception are retained in utero after a fetal death. And so this can happen if a mom goes to the doctors, she has a heartbeat, and then the next time she goes, the heart is no longer beating and the baby is still retained in utero. So um, this is a this is a tough topic, especially if anyone who has experienced this. This can be a very traumatic and sensitive subject to discuss, even to hear about. So um, we're definitely doing this for testing purposes only to pass your NCLEX exam. And our prayers go out to any of the, of, of any of a woman who is watching this and struggling with this topic, even still. Okay. Habitual abortions or type of abortions um, or miscarriages that occur in three or more consecutive pregnancies. So there's many different thoughts about uh, abortions if they are um, if they are something that is uh, acceptable or not acceptable. So here are just the religious choices for abortion. As far as the Roman Catholic beliefs, they do not believe in abortion. Uh, Judaism. Abortion is accepted within the first trimester. In Islam, abortion only for serious reasons, such as the, the health and well-being of the, the mother. Protestant Christianity, so that is all, all, all of the denominations that are related to Christianity, whether it is Baptist, uh, Methodist, what else, Pentecostal, um, the Christian denominations, they have a mixed belief on abortions, whether it is okay or if it's a sin, just like any other, they can be forgiven. Uh, Hinduism, uh, they're, they're, they have a long experience, a long um, history on abortions there. Uh, so it is essentially um, something that is, how do I, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, it is something that you can do um, because in, oh, I, you know what? I don't, I don't even know if I should. <laughs> I believe that in the afterlife, if one was aborted, then life can continue on. But if you're a practicing Hindu and I don't have that right, just put it in the comments and I'll be sure to go back and correct it. The Native American religion accepts abortions and the Chinese religion also accepts the practice of abortions. Okay. 
So our nursing responsibilities for a patient who has an abortion is, again, um, maintaining bed rest, especially if there's bleeding. That is one of the things we want to absolutely do. Monitor the vital signs of the mother, right? And monitor for cramping and bleeding. Count and weigh the uh, perineal pads for blood loss. So if you're weighing a pad for NCLEX, know that one gram equals one milliliter. And if during your care as a nurse, a woman passes any tissue or blood clots, those may want to be evaluated by the healthcare provider. So we would actually tell the mom to save those pads. And then um, intravenous fluids as prescribed and monitoring for signs of hemorrhage or shock. Continuing on with nursing responsibilities, um, the nurse would be considering preparing the client for a dilation and curettage, such as if there was an incomplete abortion. And knowing about the dilation and curettage is going to be really beneficial. I'm going to get through the slides, and then if I have to go back and explain it, I will go deeper into this. Administering Rogam, uh, oh, the RH immune globulin, I should say that, that's the generic name, as prescribed for RH negative patients, okay? And this is the mother. So that's also going to be important knowing the timing of it. If you are in the virtual trainer, we go over the administration of the um, RH immune globulin. And of course, psychological support, because this is a traumatic experience for a mother. Okay. Um, I want to just talk briefly about number six, the dilation in the curatage. I want to give you guys the notes that I have for it. So this is a two-part process where when we talk about dilation, what are we talking about? We're talking about the cervix being dilated. All right. And that is something that has to be done artificially. So normally in pregnancy, the cervix dilates because of contractions, because of pressure from the baby's head. It helps to open up the cervix. However, if you are, um, if a, a physician is wanting to get mm, embryo, embryonic tissue or fetal tissue from the mother, then they have to open up the cervix, which is the dilation part. And there's like, uh, you know, a few ways to do it. And then they have to go and do the uh, curatage, which is removing tissue. Okay. So that's what it means to remove tissue. and um, that is a process that happens. And typically the dilation part of that can start a day before the removal of the tissue. So it should be a, a gradual process to dilate the cervix and not something that is done quickly because that can cause all types of issues. And then usually this procedure, the curatage is done uh, early on, I believe it's before 12 weeks, right? Because there's early abortions and then there's late abortions. And so this procedure is done specifically before 12 weeks is what I had on my notes. All right. I wanted to share that with you guys so that if you read it, you kind of have context about what's happening. Okay. So we have gone over the content for abortions. Here are some practice questions just to see where you guys are on the topic. So the first question is this, question number one, Miss Betty, 14 weeks pregnant, reported to the nurse that she has been experiencing vaginal bleeding. Threatened abortion is suspected. Which statement made by the client indicates a need for further instruction. Okay. Number one, I will count the number of pads used. Two, I will avoid sexual intercourse until bleeding has stopped. Three, I will note the amount and color of blood in the pad. Or four, I will stay on bed rest until birth delivery. So, here we have 
14 weeks pregnant, reported to the nurse that she has been experiencing vaginal bleeding, a threatened abortion is suspected. So what is going to be the need for further instruction? All right. What is going to be the need? Which one is going to be the need um, for further instruction? Meaning here, when you're taking NCLEX, which statement made by the client can be misinterpreted or requires further education, further instruction. They have a concept down, but they don't fully have it down. Which one would you say? Okay. The correct answer here is actually number, number four. Okay. Because what do we have here? Let's go back to the other choices just really quick. What we what evidence we have here is that the client is experiencing what vaginal bleeding, vaginal bleeding. So the three choices that are related to the vaginal bleeding are correct. Now, it says here that threatened abortion is suspected. And so because it's only suspected and not confirmed, the patient saying, I will stay on bed rest until delivery needs further instruction. Does everybody see that? Okay. Because, because the patient is bleeding, number one is appropriate. I will count the number of pads used. We absolutely want them to do that. Two, I will avoid sexual intercourse until bleeding has stopped. Yes, absolutely. Actually, um, avoiding sexual activities until bleeding has stopped. And then even after um, up to two weeks is going to be what is recommended. So no bleeding uh, for two weeks. All right. And then you can resume sexual intercourse. And then noting the characteristics of the blood on the pad is also going to be appropriate for this client situation. The threatened abortion is a distraction, right? Because you don't know that yet. So the patient saying, I better stay on bed rest until the birth of this baby. You guys say, wait, 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 wait. You may not have to do that. Let's look more into this, you know, condition. Strict bed rest. Um, throughout the remainder of the pregnancy is not required for a threatened abortion, right? Uh, I should say, I'm sorry, that should say a suspected threatened abortion. But the client is instructed to count the number of uh, perennial pads used daily and to note the quality and color of blood on the pad. The client is advised to curtail sexual activities until bleeding has ceased for two weeks after the last evidence of bleeding or as recommended by the healthcare provider, okay? Okay, so because it says threatened abortion is suspected, that's why we have to go with number four, being needing for further instruction. Question number two, the nurse is taking care of a pregnant client who is on 19 weeks age of gestation. She is heavily bleeding and suffers uterine cramps. The client is suspected of having is it number one, abortion, two, preeclampsia, three, court prolapse, or four, gestational diabetes mellitus? All right, guys. So this one is pretty simple for my nursing students who are still in nursing school. Maybe you have not gone over this in your, I guess this would be considered acute care, maybe med surge, but if you have someone who is early, okay, early in their gestation before 20 weeks, that term that we're going to use is um, abortion. Sorry, my phone dropped. That term we're going to use is abortion. And this is what this client is mostly suspected of having an abortion experience, which are heavy bleeding, uterine cramping, hemorrhage, and shock. All right. Question number three is this. We have the nurses caring for a client who has suffered an abortion with retained placenta. Which type of abortion is this? Is it number one, a threatened abortion? Two, an inevitable abortion. Three, an incomplete abortion. Or four, four, an induced abortion. Which one would you guys say? This type of abortion, because there is 
retained placenta, yes, this is considered an, an incomplete abortion. Make sure to share this video, guys, because this is not a topic that um, I usually see being covered uh, for NCLEX, and it's very important to know. So an incomplete abortion is a type of abortion which is defined as the loss of some of the products of conception with part of the products retained. Most often it's the placenta. Question number four is this. We have here a client who is 18 weeks pregnant reports vaginal spotting and mild uterine cramps for two days. During assessment, the cervix remains closed. Which type of abortion is this? Hmm. Number one, a threatened abortion. Two, an inevitable abortion. Three, an incomplete abortion. Or four, an induced abortion. And these characteristics are very important. Very, very important. I will be talking more about this, more and more and more about this. Okay, the correct answer is going to be number one, a threatened abortion. And so this is any abortion before 20 weeks gestational age, and you have a positive pregnancy test, but with a threatened abortion, the cervix remains closed and there is no passage of any of the products of conception and there is no evidence of a fetal or embryonic demise. So that means that the fetus will still have a heart rate. The fetus will still have a viable heart rate during a threatened abortion. Yeah, makes sense? Okay. The next question is this. The nurse is planning the care of a client with incomplete abortion. Which of the following procedures is expected for the client? We have a dilation and a curatage. Two, a urinary catheterization. Three, a cervical serlage. Or four, a vaginal ultrasound. Hmm. Okay. So we are expecting, we are expecting this particular client to have the, what are we expecting? the dilation, number one, and curatage. And this is because this was an incomplete abortion. And so we're expecting to remove some of the tissues from inside of the uterus. And also the healthcare provider, sometimes they can perform the dilation and curatage to diagnose and treat certain uterine conditions, such as heavy bleeding, or to clear the uterine lining after a miscarriage or abortion. Okay, guys, so in all these things, it is so important for us to take these subjects, review them, and then answer questions. And I know I may sound like, you know, a broken record, but really that is the key to studying. If I just wrote the questions and presented them to you, it would be difficult to know what's the difference between a threatened abortion or an incomplete abortion or inevitable abortion. So by us taking the time to study, by you showing up here on Wednesday, you're doing yourself a huge service. And let me just tell you something. Every time you show up, it makes a difference in your knowledge. And me, myself today, I don't feel well. You guys maybe can tell I'm not like 100% on my game, but it was still important for Mark and I to come here to make sure that this topic was reviewed because some of you may see this on your NCLEX exam and you're testing very soon. You're testing very soon. It is already November. So the most of the 2022 is over. It really is. These are the final months in this year. Are you where you expect it to be? Are you satisfied with your pro progress this year when it comes to studying? That's a real question. You know, at the end of this month, is going to be a huge Black Friday, you know, event for Remar Review. You guys know how we do every Black Friday. This year will be significant to us because we will be setting the community up for essentially next generation NCLEX. If you don't have to take the next generation NCLEX, now is the time to get your license and get started. Now is the time to set that test date, get your license and get started. God forbid you spend 2023 without your nursing license, but that will happen if you don't take the steps that you need to take today. So 
If you need to commit to studying with me, do it today. I guarantee you, nobody else is going to be spending Black Friday studying with you the way that I will be, period. Like we've been planning this major event for you guys for a long, long time. So I want you to take the steps and make the commitment. You're a Remar nurse. If nobody told you that, you are. And it starts by you doing what you need to do to get your nursing license. 2022, we're saying goodbye to that year very soon. And I want you to do it in the best possible position. So showing up to our um, our winning Wednesdays and our Mo Monday motivations, they help the process, believe you me. We have a lot of testimonials and I want you to be one. So I'm gonna close this winning Wednesday by saying, Sign up for the Black Friday review. It's super simple. You'll get notices on the products that we will be um, releasing. And you also get first access to the sale prices. And you guys know how it happens on Black Friday. We sell out of things. So we're going to make sure that our Remar nurses get early access <laughs> before the general public. It's so it's an exciting time around here. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you guys so much. If you want to talk more about NCLEX stuff, text me the word NCLEX to 855-696-0132. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. See you later. Bye-bye.